Mom's the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young, his father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. All marriages, we've oft been told, are figured out in heaven. But there must be an annex on Maple Street at number 607. In the event that you didn't know, that's where the Andersons live. And that's where Dan Cupid gets in some pretty powerful licks, like, well, like this. But I'm not hungry. Stop arguing, Kathleen, and eat your dinner. Margaret, I see no reason why the children have to eat at this ridiculous hour. I don't mind eating at 5 o'clock. You don't mind eating, period. Is that so? By 9 o'clock, they'll be storming around here like a bunch of starving Armenians. And if you think... Jim, Louise will hear you. She's upstairs getting dressed. Well, it wasn't her idea. It was yours. Candlelight and soft music. She happens to be my favorite cousin. And if she needs a little help in getting Tom Goodwin to propose... They've been going together for almost five years. And if he hasn't proposed by this time... Jim... He's going to propose, believe me. I don't know. Women get these weird ideas. There's nothing weird about marriage. There isn't, huh? (laughs) Look, honey, the guy obviously isn't the marrying type. It doesn't take five years to make up your mind. I'm going to see to it that Tom Goodwin proposes to my cousin Louise tonight. Bud? Yes, Dad? I want you to keep this little scene in mind. It may come in very handy in the future. Okay, Dad. Jim. A poor guy by the name of Goodwin just goes along minding his own business, and what happens? They gang up on him, set traps. Do they really, Daddy? Oh, yes. Flickering candlelight, the sweet scent of camellias. I thought camellias didn't smell. For what I'm being charged, they'd better smell. (laughs) Isn't he awful, Mother, just because he's a man? Now, there's another thing. Isn't it disgraceful? I'm a man. You know, this isn't just a case of Louise and her friend having dinner with us. This is a fight to the finish. The hunters smell blood, and they're closing in for the kill. (laughs) I thought they were just going to have dinner. (laughs) Bud, as you grow older, you'll learn that women have a peculiar attitude when it comes to unattached males. If a man wanders around unmarried, every woman in the world considers it a personal insult. They band together, they form little groups, they compare strategies. Father. Leave him alone, dear. He'll run down. You see, bud? I don't get it. I don't, too. Well, it's very simple, children. Your mother, being a woman, and I wouldn't have it any other way, (laughs) is trying to get poor Tom Goodwin to commit matrimony with her cousin Louise. Oh, well, sure. Did you understand that? Keep still or he'll explain it again. (laughs) Jim, I don't understand your sudden interest in poor Tom Goodwin. You don't even know the man. That has nothing to do with it. He's a man. And in a case like this, we've got to stick together. Right, bud? Hmm? Oh, 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 sure. Bud, those are probably the flowers. Will you get them like a good boy? How about my cake? No one's going to touch your cake. Well, I better take it with me anyway. Bud, you'll get crumbs all over the floor. Oh, dear, if he gets this house messed up... Honey, don't you think you're going a little overboard on this thing? I certainly do not. Tom Goodwin is coming all the way from Middletown for this dinner, and if one thing goes wrong... Nothing is going wrong, Mother. He'll be hooked before he knows what hit him. Who's going to get hooked? (laughs) Never mind, dear. Just drink your milk. What I like is the high plane on which females conduct these campaigns. <laughs> He's going to be hooked. Who is Daddy? Betty, it's Dick Andrews. Tell him I'll be right there. Betty, you haven't finished your dinner. Oh, it's all right, Mother. We're going to stop in for a hamburger on the way to rehearsal. Well, don't stay out too late, dear. I won't. And good hunting. So long, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
If she knew she was going to have a hamburger, why did she... I can't understand what happened to the flowers. They were supposed to be here at four. You still didn't tell me. Tell you what, dear? Who's going to get hooked? No one is, Kathy, and please drink your milk. Anytime nobody wants to tell me anything, drink your milk. Boy, is that thick Andrew's a character. You know what he's got on? Three mufflers and a... Hey, what happened to my cake? Sit down and drink your milk. <laughs> but I had a whole piece of cake. You took it with you. I did? Oh, well, I, I guess I ate it. <laughs> you know what Dick Andrews had on? Three mufflers. Yeah, what a character. Jim, if the flowers aren't here in 15 minutes, you'll have to go after them. I have to change my shirt. What's the matter with Bud? He's leaving as soon as he finishes his milk. Me too. I'm being stashed over at Patty's, so I won't say anything. Well, you've certainly got everything all figured out, haven't you? Yes, dear. To the last detail. Poor guy. I hope he knows what he's in for. Meaning me, I suppose. Oh, hello, Louise. Don't pay any attention to Jim, dear. He's just being a man. Oh, Margaret, would you mind very much if Louise, we... Louise, you haven't changed your clothes. I know, dear. You see, I've been thinking the whole thing over, and I'm not she sure She looks all right, it... Margaret. Why don't you leave her alone? Louise Baker, you march right upstairs and put on your blue dress. Margaret... Honey, if she doesn't want Jim, to... will you please leave this to me? Oh, he's here. He isn't here. He won't be here for an hour. It's only the man with the flowers. Bud? Yes, ma'am. It's a good thing for this family. I know how to open a door. <laughs> He's the ambitious type. Margaret, would you mind very much if we called the whole thing off? I most certainly would. But if Tom ever finds Louise, out... Louise, you can't call off an avalanche. And once Margaret gets started, well, uh, that's it. Somebody's gonna get hooked. Kathy. Oh, dear. Don't worry about helpful Henrietta... She'll be out of here before you can say, why, Tom, how sudden. Jim, when it comes to being helpful... Well, even well, if he just... does propose, Margaret, it won't work. A man shouldn't be tricked into marriage. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't. A marriage has to be built on a firmer foundation. And if it starts out with trickery and deceit, well, how can it possibly last? Jim and I have done all right, haven't we? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Mom. What is it, bud? It was Mr. Davis, and he said to tell you he was awfully sorry, but they have to go over to his mother's for dinner. Oh, dear. Now what are we going to do about Kathy? Why don't I go over to the Woody's? Why don't I just go back to Middletown? You go upstairs and change your clothes. And let's not have any more of this nonsense. Better do what she says, Louise. She's a pretty rough customer. I'll see you later. Just a minute, bud. But Joe's waiting for me. Go ahead, Louise. Margaret, I am not a child. Of course you aren't. Now go upstairs and change. Oh, good grief. <laughs> this is the silliest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Wait until after you're married. That's when the silly things really begin. <laughs> Jim, what are you trying to do? What am I supposed to do? Just stand here? Oh, Bud, you'll take Kathy with you. Oh, boy! Holy cow, Mom. You're only going over to Joe's. I know, but we're going to invent a telephone. Okay, Kathy can be the bell. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Go ahead, Bud, and take good care of your sister. If she touches one thing... I won't, Bud. Honest, I won't. You won't even know I'm there. Really, you won't. Holy cow. Margaret... Yes, dear. Would you mind explaining one small thing to me? Of course not, but don't you think you'd better run down for the flowers? The flowers can wait. What did you mean, Jim and I have done all right? Well, haven't we? Naturally, but there wasn't any trickery involved in our marriage. The whole thing was my idea. Oh, Jim, it was no such thing. I made up my mind the first day we ever met. And I suppose I had nothing to do with it. That's right. Now, look, Margaret. Angel... Do you remember what happened the night you proposed? Of course I do. I walked around the block six times before I had the nerve to go in. It was only five. There was six. My father was counting them, and it was five. <laughs> okay, five. But when I pushed the bell, that was it. Jim, you were it before you even saw the bell. 
You know, now that I think of it, I got the candlelight and soft music business myself, didn't I? <sighs> to a wild rose. Took me six months to learn the darn thing. And come to think of it, I've never heard you play anything since. <laughs> Just to a wild rose. That's all it took. Well, if that isn't the most cold-blooded, conniving, I'm getting to the point where I don't even like women. You aren't supposed to, dear. Just me. I think you're clever, don't you? I've got a good mind to tell Tom Goodman what this is all about. You wouldn't dare. Oh, I wouldn't, wouldn't no, I? No, you wouldn't. Now stop acting like a spoiled little boy and answer the door. Yes, Mother. And if it isn't the man with the flowers, you will have to go after them. I don't have to. But I will. <laughs> Women, they think they're so smart about everything. Can't even let a man make up his own mind about getting married. Music. Flowers. Well, it certainly took you long enough to get here. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson, but you see... Never mind the explanations. Just give me the flowers. Yes, sir. You just about ruined everything. I did? You certainly did. You see, these aren't just flowers. These are tools to dig the grave of an unsuspecting bachelor. They are. Yep. Poor guy. He's as good as cooked right now. Well, where do I sign? For what? The flowers. Don't I have to sign for them? Oh, no. You see, I'm Tom Goodwin. <laughs> Well, it looks like Father may have talked out of turn this time. And yet, more often than not, the man of the house does know exactly what he's talking about. For instance, ladies, when it comes to coffee, truly good coffee, that husband of yours is the world's greatest expert. No two ways about it. The number one expert on coffee is your husband. Of course, grocers call us experts, too. They know more families enjoy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. But when you brew the coffee, the final judge is your husband. And tomorrow, if you'll fill his cup with wonderfully good Maxwell House, we're sure he'll smile across the table and say, Wonderful. Best coffee ever. In fact, if he doesn't, we'll give you your money back. You see, we know no coffee tastes like Maxwell House because no coffee's made like Maxwell House. In all this world, there's only one recipe for that famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor a recipe demanding certain choice coffees blended just so. And only Maxwell House has that recipe. So we say, take home a pound of our coffee. Tomorrow, serve your husband Maxwell House. If he doesn't say, best coffee ever, just send us the can, an unused portion, and we'll gladly refund the price you paid. Our address is plainly printed on every familiar blue tin. But enough from me. Tomorrow, see how much the world's greatest expert enjoys our coffee. Tomorrow, serve your husband Maxwell House coffee. Good to the last drop. The candles have burned low in the Anderson's dining room, and the scent of flowers mingles gently with the memory of good red beef. The dinner hour is almost gone, and a delicate moment approaches. The time has arrived for the kill, like this. Uh, why don't we have our coffee in the living room? I think we'll be much more comfortable. In the living room? Since when do we have... Jim. Oh, yes. Uh, why don't we have our coffee in the living room? <laughs> we, uh, be more comfortable. Ah, uh, gosh, that was sure a wonderful dinner, Margaret. Oh, well, thank you, Tom. Margaret's a wonderful cook, isn't she? She sure is. Well, it runs in our family. Doesn't it, Louise? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. You She's see, just I... being modest, Tom. Grandmother Williams always used to say that our family produced the finest cooks in the entire country. Ye gods. <laughs> what was that, dear? Uh, nothing, nothing. I was just, uh... Well, certainly looks romantic in here, doesn't it? Fire in the fireplace. All the lights turned off. Jim... Well, I was only saying... Why don't you sit down, Tom, and we'll have our coffee. Well, thank you very much. Cream and sugar? No, thanks. I'll take it straight. <laughs> <laughs> Louise? Thank you, Margaret. You take yours plain, too, don't you? Uh, yes, I, I do. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? You and Tom have so many things in common, don't you? <laughs> oh. Is something wrong, Jim? 
No, no, I, uh, I was just wondering when my turn was coming up. Uh, for coffee, I mean. Here you are, dear. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Tom, it's a funny thing, but after you get used to having a few kids in the Louise, house... Louise, uh, why don't you play something for us? Oh, I don't think Sure, I sure, should. go ahead, Lou. You play and uh, we'll drink our coffee. All right. Uh, how would you like to a wild rose? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Jim, if you don't stop It's that. all right. I... It, it went down the wrong pipe, that's all. <laughs> Go ahead, Louise. Oh, but Jim I... will love To a Wild Rose. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's uh, practically my favorite song. Yeah? Mine, too. Yes. <laughs> Well, that didn't last very long, did it? Kathy, why aren't you... Hi, everybody. Bud! Hello, Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. You guys, they brought a friend. <laughs> Bud, I distinctly told you... Mom, you know what she did? She blew out all the fuses at the Phillips. I did not! You certainly did. I didn't either, did I, Joe? Well, I don't know who did it, but the lights are sure all out. <laughs> Look, uh, why don't you kids... We told her to plug it in when we said okay. You did not. You just said to plug it in. Joe, you were right there. Didn't I tell her to wait? Gosh, I don't know. I was down in the basement. What were you trying to do? Blow up the house? We were making a telephone, Dad, and I told Bud. her... Bud. Yes, ma'am? I want you and Kathy to go right back to Joe's. But there aren't any lights. Bud Anderson, if you don't go back to Joe's this very instant... Hey, what's the matter with our lights? Jim, will you please do something? All right, honey. Did we blow a fuse, too? Your mother's liable to any second. <laughs> Joe? Yes, sir? Aren't your mother and father at home? No, sir. You see, we didn't know Kathy was coming over, and when she did, my mother and father decided they had to go to the movies. <laughs> Jim, why don't you take the children inside? All right. Come on, kids. I'm sure Louise and Tom will understand. Of course. Oh, was he the one who's going to get... Kathy. <laughs> uh, let's all go down to the playroom and see if we can't get this thing straightened out. Come on, Kathy. Well, stop calling me. Why do you always have to call me? See you later, me? Mrs. Anderson. All right, Joe. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Tom. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind a little noise. Tom lives at the Y in Middletown, and he's used to having boys around. Aren't you, Tom? Yeah, I sure am. I see. Uh, tell me, do you like living at the Y? Oh, sure. Yeah, I like it fine. I mean, it isn't like having your own home, is it? Well, no, but then there wouldn't be any sense in my having my own home, would there? Gosh, I'm not even married. And so we understand. Margaret, if you don't mind... Well, I, I guess I got that all... Oh, Jim! <laughs> Why aren't you more careful? What do you mean, careful? It's so dark in here, I can't even see where I'm... Oop. I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, that's all right, Jim. There. Just about made it, didn't I? Are the children all right, dear? Oh, sure. They're going to rig up the phone over here, but they promise not to make any noise. Oh, dear. You see, Joe got a telephone outfit for Christmas, and they've been trying Jim, to... Jim, hmm? Louise was going to play. But I was just telling... Uh, I, I'm sorry, Louise. Uh, just go right ahead. Well... To a wild rose. All right. Pretty, isn't it? Jim. Well, I was just... Yes. Yoo-hoo, everybody, I'm back! Oh, no. Go on in, Mr. Danzig. I'll be right there. Okay. Mother, the most terrible thing happened. We were... What are you all sitting around in the dark for? <laughs> the, uh... Roses grow better that way. <laughs> Betty, you said the rehearsal wouldn't be over until 10. Well, the boiler broke down and there wasn't any heat, and you've never seen any place so cold. Hi, Louise. Hello, dear. I, um, I haven't met your friend. Oh, I'm sorry. Betty, this is Tom Goodwin. How do you do? Hi, Betty. Louise was telling hey, me Betty. to... Oh, excuse me, I forgot all about Dick. I'll be right in! Betty, please. I understand, Mother. We won't make a sound. 
<laughs> How did he get upstairs? Kathy! Bud! We're almost finished, Dad. Kathy! Betty! I'm coming! I don't know what's gotten into those children tonight. Uh, did you say something, Tom? No, no, I was just sitting here, that's all. <laughs> well, ordinarily, you don't even know they're in the house. Honey. Well, well, well I mean, you, you know they're in the house, of course, but... Go ahead, dear. What? The piano, you were doing beautifully, wasn't she, Tom? Oh, she sure was, just great. All right, Louise. If the roses weren't wild in the beginning, they are now. <laughs> Jim. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Oh, dear. Kathy, tell Joe it needs more volume. Oh, Joe! Well, tell him to turn the plug over. Joe, turn the plug over. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Jim. Leave him alone, Margaret. They'll stop. Kathy, ask him how it is now. Fine. Joe wants to know how it is now. It's worse. Tell him to put it back the way it was. <laughs> oh, Joe. I don't think I can stand this for another second. The kids are the piano. <laughs> Betty, it's for you. Okay, I'll be right in. Louise. Louise. Uh, oh, will you excuse us for just a minute? Uh, Jim and I have a few things we want to take care of. Oh, please don't worry about us, Margaret. Oh, we'll get along fine. All right, Jim. What? We have to take care of those things. What things? Kathy! All oh, those things. <laughs> Kathy! Uh, we'll be right back, Tom. Well, don't hurry on our account now. We're not going anywhere. Hello! Oh, hello, Janie. Jim, Daddy, I have never been so embarrassed in my entire life. Well, this will teach you not to go around playing Cupid. With a house full of kids, what did you expect? I expected Tom Goodwin to propose, and he's going to. I'll still take Tennessee in six points. <laughs> I want you to go right down to the playroom and explain to Kathy and Why don't I, I just shoot them and get it over with? <laughs> Jim. Well, how do you expect a bunch of normal kids... They don't have to practice hog calling tonight, do they? No, but... Well, I'll speak to them. I'll take care of Betty and Jim. Please be firm with them. Oh, sure. I'll tell them they've got to make a very quiet type of noise. Bud? We're down here, Dad. Bud, whether or not you know it, you and Kathy are in a jam. We are? What'd we do? Hey, look at this. There's a whole box of things we never even saw. Well, no wonder it wouldn't work. Bud, I'm trying to tell you... Let's go upstairs and try it again. Kathy. What? Now, look. Bud. Kathy. And you too, Joe. Yes, sir. I went out and bought a book, and I'm now an expert on child psychology. You are? Gosh! And do you know what the book says to do? If I hear one more peep out of any one of you, I'm to come down here and wring your scrawny little necks. <laughs> Boy, psychology. <laughs> Now, is that understood? We were only trying to fix up the phone, Dad. We didn't know you were going to get mad. All right, just remember, one little peep. Jim! Hmm? Oh, Jim! What's the matter, honey? Oh, Jim, it happened. What? What happened? Isn't it wonderful, Father? Did he get hurt? Kathy. <laughs> well, I'm so excited, I can't even think. What's going on, bud? Louise. Oh. Oh, Jim, I've never been so happy in my whole life. You mean he did it? <laughs> Look, a ring and everything. Well, what do you know? Well, congratulate me, Jim. I finally made it. You finally made it? I mean... Just... <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Thank you, Jim. They, they're going to be married in June. Isn't it thrilling? I should say it. Yes, sir, and I owe it all to you and Margaret. <laughs> to us? Well, sure. You see, Jim, I was an only child, and things around my house were always... Well, kind of quiet. All right, but... That's why I was afraid to get married. I thought it'd be sort of dull. 
But gosh, if it's like this... You mean you're getting married for the noise? Isn't it wonderful? Oh, no. <laughs> Tomorrow or Saturday, you'll probably buy coffee for that family of yours. And above all, you'll be shopping for flavor. Then it makes sense, doesn't it, to choose the coffee with the most famous flavor in the world? Our Maxwell House coffee. Now, don't take my word. Call in the world's greatest coffee expert. Right. Brew a pot of Maxwell House for your husband. He's the final expert on coffee. When he beams and says, best coffee ever... You'll know Maxwell House has the flavor. And for value, well, count for yourself all the truly good cups of coffee you get from every pound. This weekend, look for coffee that gives you your money's worth and more. Look for the friendly blue tin with the big white cup and drop. That's your sign of good coffee. Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's breakfast time on Maple Street, and the Andersons, five little cupids with egg on their chins, are deep in the morning meal and deep in their usual problems, like this. Isn't it strange the way things turn out, dear? You mean Louise and Tom? Yes. <laughs> now, who would ever have guessed that he was so crazy about children? Louise said they're going to have millions of them. <laughs> she said six. That's what I said. Margaret. Yes, dear. You don't have any more cousins you'd like to, uh, uh... No, dear. Not even a second cousin? Jim, I give you my word, my matchmaking days are over. <laughs> Good. May I please have the sugar? Thank you. Father. Yes, Benny? Do you know a boy named Frank Culbertson? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, he belongs to the athletic club. What about him? Well, you must know him, Father. He's 27 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, 5 feet 11 inches, 165 uh, no, no, pounds. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Even if I did know him, don't you think he's a little old for you? Oh, I didn't mean for me. But Janie Liggett's cousin is 25, and that's pretty old for a girl to be wandering around without a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So we were just wondering if you cream, couldn't please? sort of drop oh, a kid around the club that you know a Kathy, girl you don't who'd be lots milk, of fun going for to be somebody for who was blonde. Is it all right if I dunk my toes? Well, what do you know? I think the sun's trying to come out. At breakfast time, you don't have to say... You children eat your cereal right this instant. Just say... Hopalong Cassidy is crazy about hot wheat meal. Just a little psychology. Yes, to get your children to eat a hot cereal, just tell them Post Wheat Meal is Hopalong Cassidy's favorite hot cereal. And they'll eat it too. Post Wheat Meal is chock full of solid whole wheat nourishment. Has a wonderful nut-like flavor. And it cooks in just three and a half minutes. You'll see, you'll all agree, it's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with June Whitley as Margaret, Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Former. So until next Thursday... Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs> Coming up, Dragnet with tense, absorbing drama on NBC.